time now for the News Nation Postscript, focusing this week on the Democratic National Convention. First Lady Michelle Obama's big opening night address set a high bar for all who followed. Barack knows the American dream because he's lived it. And he wants everyone in this country, everyone, to have the same opportunity. Mitt Romney, quite simply, doesn't get it. The Republican argument against the president's re-election was actually pretty simple, pretty snappy. It went something like this. We left him a total mess. He hadn't cleaned it up fast enough, so fire him and put us back in. America is not in decline. I've got news for Governor Romney and Congressman Ryan. Gentlemen, never, ever, it never makes sense. It's never been a good bet to bet against the American people. As I stand here tonight, I have never been more hopeful about America. Not because I think I have all the answers. Not because I'm naive about the magnitude of our challenges. I'm hopeful because of you. And joining for us for the Postscript this Friday, special edition of it, senior reporter for Newsweek, Andrew Romano. Andrew, I think I spoke with a number of Republicans who had to admit, when you look at those speeches, it was unmatched. When you put the DNC up against the RNC speeches. A lot of the RNC speeches were people talking about themselves and maybe positioning themselves for 2016. How do you categorize the week? Yeah, I think it was definitely a win for the Democrats in, in terms of comparing the two conventions. Uh, as you said, you saw Chris Christie, Mark, Marco Rubio up on stage at the RNC sort of auditioning for 2016. The message was extremely unified and well managed at the Democratic convention. It was all about reelecting Obama, sort of re-upping on hope and change and trying to follow that through and say, don't give up now. You, you voted for me back in 2008. We need to see this thing through. Well, I think first we compared it to building a house, Michelle Obama laying the foundation, the president coming on at the end and putting on the roof. The reality is, unless you TiVo this and decide to watch it every day for the next 60 days, in this world of ever-changing things, these conventions, both of them, will be in the back of our memory. What do you believe are the things in the next 60 days will matter most? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we saw the economic numbers come out this morning, the right. jobs report. That, that's going to be a steady drumbeat of not so great news. So that's difficult for President Obama. I think the things to watch over the next month or so or two months, really, the debates are going to be the deciding thing. In October, uh, when the two candidates are up there on stage for the first time together, that's when a lot of these undecided voters are going to start are to make their decisions. Are they equally matched as far as skill when it comes to debates? They're both very good debaters, yeah. Romney, uh, I think if you remember back to the Republican primary, he, he kind of wiped the floor with most of the other uh, candidates in these debates. The question, I think, is there's, there's more of an onus on Romney to prove himself. People are comfortable with Obama. They know him. But this is Romney's audition. This is when he gets up there and he can show people that maybe he's more likable, maybe he's more relatable than they thought he was. Well, I don't think likable, relatable, or any of the descriptions that came out of the debates no. in the Republican primary right. regarding him, and that's not to besmirch him. That's not his strong point. And he and his wife have both, both admitted that. I'm curious curious about some of the foreign policy debates mm -hmm. that we'll have or the foreign policy debate that we will have here. The president hit on the fact in his speech that, you know, the first thing you don't do is go to our, our nation's ally and insult them during, of all things, the Olympics. That was a little frivolous and funny note there, but there are more serious questions about Romney's background on foreign policy that extend beyond the economy, which he likes to talk about. Yeah, that's the point that Obama made in his speech, right. too, saying, kind of turning the tables and saying, this is the most untested ticket that we've seen. Two, two candidates on the Republican side without any foreign policy experience. Which and was the argument uh, that was attempted to be used against him with exactly. John McCain, and they lost that argument. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I'm, I think that it's amazing to see how much ground Republicans have ceded to Democrats on foreign policy. If you had stepped into a time machine in 1972 or 1982 and come forward to 2012, right. it's a complete reversal. It's, it's The Democrats own the, that issue in this election. So there's a, there's a high uh, bar for Romney to but clear. But does anyone own the economy right now, this debate over our economy? No, I mean, that's what the whole campaign is about and determining, you know, who, who voters think will be the best steward for the economy over the next four years. That's, that's the, the bottom line. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew. Great pleasure having you on.